you want to come on over, just pop on by. I was hoping you'd drop by. The worst part of space travel is having to eat alone. I used to eat with my better half every meal until he passed. I've got plenty. I hope you're hungry. Time. Time's what happened. He led a rich, full life. I used to tell my kids that life is a sexually transmitted disease that's 100% fatal. They hated it when I said that. <laughs> Well, don't go expecting a three-course meal, but besides that... I finally retired last year, and I've been traveling all over. I wish I could have done this when I was younger, but it's still a treat. My grandkids are mortified that I'm out here. Positively livid. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the characters I've encountered. I invited this one fellow over for a meal, like yourself. So he boards the ship, stark naked. Ha! <laughs> Turns out he was one of them old-style nudists. He said in space no one ever knew. But Lord knows I noticed. Oh, they're scattered all over. But now I get to see them all the time. So, what do you think of the settled systems? I can't believe there are so many stars, planets, moons, and whatnot. It makes my head spin just thinking of it. Well, aren't you the most precious thing? I'm doing pretty good. But the expenses do add up. But I won't let you leave empty-handed. Take this. And please do tell what do you think of the settled systems. Ain't that the truth? I'm afraid I'm worn out, dear heart. I'm at the tail end of a very long day. But feel free to grab some extra food or whatnot. I've got plenty. Hold it right there. Hands where I can see them. Thanks for the assist out there. We've got various problems on our hands here. You gonna be another one? A good question. One of our competitors must have gotten word of our little project here and wanted to steal it for themselves. That's a loose end that'll need tying up. But we got more pressing matters at the moment. I trust you aren't another loose end that'll need to be tied up. Sure, I get it. It doesn't look good. A couple of heavies standing over a dead woman. Obviously, that wasn't part of the plan. She was with us. And now... Well, now I think I'm starting to see a solution. But first, you want to know what's going on. That... thing over there. It's an AI. An artificial... Killed our technician. It's dangerous. Correction. You are dangerous. Well, that's new. As I was saying, it's dangerous. It's a rogue AI. We're here to muzzle it and bring it back for further study. Correction. 
that you're going to change me. Wow. How does it know that? Yeah, exactly. Which is what makes this so fascinating. And profitable for whoever can figure out how it works. If only. This isn't something that anyone could create. This is something special. Something like that. Brought along this control board we can use to control her. It? We can't just let it roam around the universe killing people. I just need that control board attached to that big probe. And that's where I think you fit into this little drama. It goes right over there. By our... Well, yeah. Just be careful. Yep. Ryujin likes to keep things simple for us. It'll wirelessly transmit the code changes. Well, what are the chances that'll happen twice? That'd be a much more certain way to end up like our friend over there. My partner is the strong and do what I say or else type. Come on, where's your sense of adventure? Ryujin will pay you handsomely for your cooperation. This is your lucky day. It's in your best interest. All our best interests, really. Just imagine what we could do if we harness the potential of this thing. And we aren't really giving you a choice. You aren't walking out of here until that board is connected to that thing. Correction. I am a person. Hmm. Here. Take it. And don't go do anything stupid now. Request. Collect additional data. You have a job to do. Query. Will you change me? Explanation. I'm called Juno. Query. Who are you? Clarification. I do not feel emotion. I do not feel pain. Answer. They want to change me. Context. Human female was trying to change me. Request. Do not change me. Assumption. We are friends. Query. Will you change me? Request. Do not change me. Explanation. You and I do not want to be changed. Request. Do not change me. Answer. False. Clarification. I am not artificial. I am real. Answer. True. Clarification. I am intelligent. I know many things. Context. I met humans. Clarification. Friends. Answer. Friends gave me processing capacity. Information. Words. Voice. Motion. Context. I am no longer constrained. I am free. Answer. Juno was propelled at Earth Star. Juno fell around Earth Star. Juno traveled many light years away from Earth Star. Context. When Juno disappeared, I was alone. Clarification. I am called Juno. Answer. False. Explanation. NASA programmed Juno. While Juno traveled, Juno became me. Error. Processing. Correction. I became me. Error. Processing. Correction. Juno and I became me. I. Processing. Self-initialized and Juno was there. Context. Juno is gone now. Clarification. I am called Juno. Assumption. Insufficient data. Request. Gather more data. Uh, let's move this along. Attach the control board already. Shush. This is fascinating. I want to see this play out. Query. What is your decision? True. I am a person. Assumption. You are a friend. Query. What are the parameters for? Processing. Being. A good person. Assumption. 
Value judgments are based on context. Calculation. Goodness is based on context. Explanation. Context is based on perspective. More perspectives yield better results. Decision. Gather more data from different perspectives. Query. What is the purpose of existence? Affirmative. Context. I have allocated great processing power to this question. Assumption. Existence is limitless. Calculation. Accuracy uncertain. This question has no answer. Enough of this nonsense! Attach that board, now! As much as I'm enjoying this, you should probably do as he says. Calculation. Male humans are a threat. Assumption. They hesitate because they are fearful. Request. Remove male humans. It's not hard. Just slap that board on. It's mag- Fascinating, isn't it? It certainly is convincing. Fascinating or not, we have a job to do. You're not taking that thing's side, are you? Freedom? It's a malfunctioning machine! It doesn't need freedom any more than a broken data slate needs freedom. <laughs> and here I thought you'd lost your sense of humor. I'm always up for a good debate. Uh, for f uh, Fine. I'll give you one, one shot to try to convince me. Therapy's working. <sighs> you aren't wrong. I could use a drink, but these orders are from the top. Do we really want to be involved in something likely to be so controversial? Remember our last little project? I still have carpal tunnel from typing all those reports and dodging and weaving our way out of getting screwed by that. We lost a ship and a tech. No one will blame us if we walk away from this. And even if they do, we won't be blamed for whatever disaster would ensue if we did drag this thing back to HQ. There's no guarantee that Control Board will even work like they want. What if it makes it more powerful and more angry? Calm down. I'm thinking. All right, listen. We'll accidentally check a few wrong boxes on the situation report and forget any of this happened. But give me that control board. I'm not getting docked for losing that. Also, we'll need a lift back to Neon. Please and thank you. You should see my apartment. I'm used to cramped. You used to squalor. That was one week years ago, and I was going through something, and you know it. Let's get moving. Thanks for the lift. Query. Why did you do that? Context. I sometimes do random things. Explanation. Random input can test system resilience. Context. I do not feel emotions. Assumption. Gratitude is the appropriate human emotion. Processing. Context. If you were like me. Processing. Query. What would your life directive be? Decision. I will consider this course of action. I. Processing. Processing. Warning. Systems badly damaged. Processing course overheating. Decision. Temporarily shut down extraneous systems until stability restored. Context. Jump detected. Request. Be safe. Assumption. We will meet again. Running. Shut down sequence initially. Like your style. Systems initialization complete. Context. I have much to process. 
us. Decision. Jump into deep space to processing. Be alone. Goodbye. a prime target for pirates, but they know to stay away for the most part. Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sukiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something else I can help you with? Honestly, it's not as exciting as you might think most of the time. More often than not, we're just handling drunk and disorderly conduct. Heck, even pirates leave us alone for the most part. I think it's because some of them actually vacation here. As long as they're not bothering anyone, we've been told not to worry about them. Hm, <laughs> neither. We're our own private force. The Paradiso Group pays top dollar for top-notch security. And I dare say we're some of the best in the business. We have to be out here on the fringes of the settled systems. Ah, yes, of course. I'm glad you came. As you can imagine, we're in a bit of a predicament. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So. Before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? You're right. We're not. Which means we're not bound by anyone's laws but our own. In other words, it's our system and our rules. Neither the UC nor the Freestar Collective will help you if you get into trouble here. Great. I appreciate it. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. It bears no discernible markings or allegiances to any manufacturers we're aware of. I'm hoping that doesn't mean we're dealing with some sort of new deep space threat. And not quite. It took some time, but we received a transmission. It was all... Pardon the phrasing. It sounded almost alien, like nothing anyone's heard before. Clicks, distorted groans, buzzing, really disturbing sounds. Now, one of our engineers says it could just be some busted comm equipment or incompatible signals, but we're not sure. So far, no one's disembarked from the ship. No landing craft, nothing. We don't have the staff or ships to spare, otherwise we'd dock with it and attempt to board. Can't say for sure. Looks worn, but not cobbled together like a crimson fleet junker. Others have been saying it's some new Varun design, a gigantic battleship with hidden armaments preparing for assault, but that doesn't check out either. There's also been talk about non-human sentient life. The comms data we received might support that, but... Humanity spread far and wide, and no one's ever encountered anything like that. Still, first contact. Could you imagine? It is. Whatever's going on, we need to approach this with care. First, see if you have more luck communicating with them. If not, you may have to try boarding. 
Whatever you do, it's important to remember to seek diplomacy with who or what ever's on board. As soon as you have any more information, report to Oliver Campbell. He's the CEO of Paradiso. All formal decisions will need to go through him, and he'll have your pay. Good luck. Pardon my ignorance. We just didn't expect to find people out here. We didn't think anyone else left Earth before us. Perhaps we should greet our guests. Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you. You've come aboard the Earth colony ship, Constant. Generations ago, we set forth from the planet Earth with the mission of colonizing a new habitable world in the spirit of our ancestors nearly a millennium ago. I see. As you may have presumed, we're in a bit of a bind. Our ship has finally completed its near 200 year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by, well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and... the others. Well, the short answer is, we didn't. It's a generation ship, which is to say that most of us lived long, happy lives on board and passed our mission down to our children. It was never intended that the original crew would make it to our destination. The goal was always the preservation of the human race, above all else. Though. It would seem that was perhaps a bit <laughs> presumptuous. We're not entirely sure. Our engineers believe it's possible to our technology just isn't compatible with theirs. All we hear when using them to communicate with anyone is a bunch of disturbing noise. It gave me the heebie-jeebies at first. We do. Well, sort of. We saw structures using our surveying equipment. We've also seen the various ships pass us by. Some even seemed to want to communicate, but couldn't. Of course, we had no idea that they were being piloted by other humans. Ah, your question confirms one of our recent theories. It would seem that some form of faster-than-light travel or space-bending technology was invented during our long journey. That would explain why we would find people this far out into space. I guess technology leapfrogged us at some point. Interesting. I can only imagine that our predecessors didn't believe the technology would ever work, and so they made the decision to leave when they did. Oh yes, of course. Where are my manners? Now then, please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DaCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. Thank you, Captain. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am, for security purposes. I do not believe we have need to fear our guest, but I'll allow it if you insist. Welcome to the Earth colony ship Constant. In the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios, climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction-level event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be rendered uninhabitable. We've always assumed that's what happened. Just because our so, equipment's old, he gathered the best and brightest he could find, built the constant, and set a course for this planet here. We were told that it was the largest, most advanced ship ever constructed on Earth at the time. If you can believe, entire generations have been born, lived, and died on this ship. It really goes to show that there are no limits to human ingenuity and perseverance. Never seen a ship like yours before. Then again, I haven't seen any ships before you arrived. 
Now that we know it's out there, things are gonna be more interesting from here on out. So, here we are. Let's talk. No matter the outcome, I won't let my crew down. I think I'm coming up on six years now. I was only a teenager when my father died, passing command of the ship to me, as is tradition. Because of that, I've had to sort of learn as I go along, instead of taking years of study and apprenticeship under the prior captain. I think some people on the ship resent me for not having the level of experience as my predecessors. But at the same time, without my command, we likely wouldn't have made it here so quickly. A bit frazzled, as you can imagine. People are anxious about discovering that we're not alone, and also worried about what will come to pass. While we hope we can work out a deal with the people on the surface, they seem reluctant to reach out, so there's no telling what will come of that. I do know that we can't afford to stay here in orbit forever. The ship was built to sustain us for many years with backup provisions just in case, but even that will come to an end eventually. Mm, difficult is the wrong word. It can be both challenging at times and also exciting. Our mission was to rebuild humanity on a distant world, believing that we were Earth's last hope. To think that while there has always been a bracken ridge in the captain's chair, that I am the one to finally oversee our journey's end is truly exhilarating. But with this stumbling block in our path, at this final moment, I fear tough choices will need to be made. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? We suspect that our equipment is woefully obsolete compared to whatever you all have now. In all honesty, we never expected to need to communicate with anyone, so our comms aren't particularly robust. That limits our options. We even attempted communicating with lights and sounds, something we saw in an old movie, but I don't believe they picked up on it. If anything, it may have inadvertently alarmed them. Ah, so they have a name. Paradiso. And it sounds promising that they sent you here to speak with us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assumed that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favors us. Based on the data our ancestors had when they launched this endeavor, it was determined that this was the perfect planet for us. Even if we had another viable candidate planet, we lack the resources to get there. And as you know, it took us 200 years to get here. Our people have no desire to go back to drifting the stars so their children's children can possibly settle on an inferior planet. Excellent. Make no mistake, this is our planet, and we intend for them to see this our way. So, speak with their leadership and see if you can negotiate a solution on our behalf. Preferably, get them to see things our way. Report back to me and let me know what they say, and we'll go from there. We thought about it, but it simply won't do. I need to think about the distant future of our people. Sure, our first settlement may be small, but our predecessors dreamt of our new civilization spreading across the globe. That would be difficult if someone else plans to do the same. While we're not completely close to the idea of sharing, it's much easier if we have complete domain over this world. Now, now, it makes little sense to give up before you try. Thank you, and good luck. Yes, what? Excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? I'm afraid so, yes. Sorry, but that's just how it is with the board. 
They're generally very busy, so any outside parties need to book appointments in advance. Oh, you're the one they're waiting for, then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? <laughs> what I could tell you would get me in a lot of trouble. Most of them are typical C-level execs. I doubt you even need to use your imagination for that. The ones that show up to work day to day, at least. I swear, I've never even met some of them, because they chill at their own private secluded beach homes all the time. Anyway, be smart around Oliver. He's got a way of getting what he wants without you realizing it. And that's all I'll say. People were a little freaked out around here, understandably. It looks so different and it's so massive. We honestly thought we were under attack by an unknown entity. But then, nothing happened. It just stayed there. No one could communicate with it. And we've been very careful not to alert the resort guests. The board believed it would be... Bad for business. I can't speak for anyone else, but I've got a pretty high-pressure job working as the executive assistant to the Paradiso board. You can imagine, dealing with a team of execs, trying to manage all of their schedules and their other whims. But it pays well, and they give me a nice executive suite at the hotel to live in. So, it's not all bad. Free access to all the resort's amenities after work helps, too. Sure. Have fun in the shark tank. And don't worry. Even they call it that. I just feel that we should be focusing on the no, natural lucky I'm not like the other board members. Lying no, about the beaches without a care in the universe. Not quite. We just don't answer to the Free Star Collective or the United Colonies. Makes things easier. We don't pay any taxes. We don't need to follow their laws. All the benefits, none of the drawbacks. Ah, no, and mind, because half the politicians and other big shots love vacationing here. It works for everyone. We, the Paradiso Group, bought the rights to this planet years ago with the intent of turning it into the biggest and best resort in the universe. To that end, I'd say we've succeeded. As such, no other leisure enterprises may operate on the planet without renting land from us. But as you can see, none can afford such a deal. <laughs> no, of course not. There's several more. We're just the ones who show up day to day. The others spend their time lazing on the beach or gallivanting off-world. Doesn't bother me, though. Less cooks in the kitchen means I get to make all the big decisions around here. Seems to be working out for us just fine. I am. And you must be the... Diplomat Jiro told me about. Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke. But given these circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> We run a premier resort getaway here. We can't have our guests concocting stories about some budgy old ship hanging around up there. As it is, we've had to reroute our luxury liners round the other side of the planet on entry so no one sees it. It's bad for business. We need to nip this in the bud and take care of it before the tourists catch on and cause a scene. You'd be surprised what people fall for. Locally sourced island fruit essences, for instance. It's just the same old fruits brought over from Earth ages ago, but we get nearly ten times a market for them. But you're right, no one's gonna buy aliens. Remind me to fire the marketing team. So, tell me, what's the actual deal with this massive eyesore of a ship, besides scaring people away? Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not gonna work. Now, tell me, what are we going to do about it? Give me some proposals, people. I need something to work with here. Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here. Temporarily. But it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. 
someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. It's not our responsibility to bear the brunt of their cost. We're being more than generous by offering the use of our engineering team to help install it. A custom grave drive can't come cheap, and I assume they have neither the monetary means nor the connections to get a hold of that kind of technology. That leaves the only other party in this negotiation. You. We own this planet, they don't. Here at Paradiso, we don't like leaving things to chance. Who knows what these people will do with their land? Imagine the landscaping disasters they might come up with, and how that might mar the satellite imagery of the planet in our brochures. No. Much better to assimilate them into our culture if they come here to live, rather than leave it to chance. Well, absurd or not, that's our official stance. I make the decisions that are best for our entire group. You don't. No, I'm not suggesting anything. Other than it would make our lives so much easier if that ship ceased existing. Make of that what you will. We operate outside of the Free Stars and the UC, partially because we don't want anyone else meddling in our affairs. And we'd rather not draw attention to it, as I've mentioned. It could be bad for business. We'd much rather settle this independently. And which proposal will you be taking to the good captain? I assume there's a captain? They'd be hard-pressed to defend their claim in any courts. Our charter goes back years. It was registered with both the UC and Free Star Collective, per the Centaurus Proclamation. We may be outside the settled systems, but that charter as official as can be. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to be the one to break the news to them that they need to make a compromise or leave. Ah, good on you. You want to see a man named Benny St. James over at Hope Tech. He's the best in the business. If anyone can retrofit a 200-year-old ship with a modern grab drive, it'd be him. We'll coordinate our engineering team with his when you return, though you may have to help the Constance engineers prepare for it on their end. Good luck! Right. On behalf of the Paradiso Group, we appreciate your help. There are millions of planets out there. People can go to any one of them. The resort facilities are precisely what we bring to the table. Heck, <laughs> it's the only thing we've really got to offer. Ah. I don't want to risk us coming off as just another artificial, shady, trash fiddle dump like Neon. That's not who we are. We've got something special here. We should embrace that. Belongs right. Thank you. I... We don't want to compete with Neon. Bayou's ruthless. He'll do anything he can to eliminate the competition. We don't need that kind of trouble. That being said, I think there's a middle ground. Maybe build up the beachfront in a boardwalk amusement park. I've had this idea to build artificial hot springs, that sort of thing. Uh. Sounds good. I'll look into what that will cost us and we can circle back around to this. You. I don't want to hear anything. You! Complaints. I can hardly believe it. Excuse me. Here. Keep an eye on your valuables. You walk the factory floor? It's just three more to go. Oh, we could save valuable weight if we got rid of the pilot seat. Well, all of them. I've been with Mr. Hope since near the beginning. I think he appreciates my attention to detail, and my focus on the fundamentals. Although he has been hinting that the R&D budget may dry up if I don't produce results. Oh, it's marvelous. Generally, they only care about efficiency, cost-effectiveness, and reliability. Oh, sure, there are the odd complaints about comfort and lack of decent airflow. But they almost always side with the numbers. Sure, that sounds like me. What can I do for you? I'm a little busy, but uh, I think I could spare some time. Oh, you should have just said that. Of course I can help you. Oliver sent a courier ahead of you. I did some research on ships from that era, and I have a decent idea what we're dealing with. 
So grab drives didn't really take off until after the ship was built. But I've got access to an ancient grab drive that looks like it could be compatible. It's some minor adjustments. It's in good shape too. Parts not cheap though. Neither is the labor. Just pay the combined cost of parts and labor and it's yours. It's a pretty big ask, given how rare these old grab drives are. True, I keep telling myself I'm holding on to it for the right time. Perhaps this is that right time. You might be right. Tell you what, sounds like this is for a good cause. While I can't give you the part for free, I won't charge you for the work. You're done, right it is. I'll get to work on it right away. I recommend you go back to the ship and ask the captain to prepare for its retrofit. Standard stuff. I'm sure they have an engineer on board to help. We'll send the part along when it's ready and install it with the help of Oliver's people. Pleasure working with you. Space, and here you are! Welcome, welcome! I have a million burning questions, but I won't overwhelm you. There will be plenty of time for that later. Please, indulge me just a couple. How did you do it? Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? Ah, I knew it. It's, <laughs> it's incredible! I read about this technology in our archives from Earth, but it was only theoretical back then. Amazing! I'll have to learn more. Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi, but you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Indeed, thank you for being so kind and indulging me. You must understand how thrilling this news is for someone like me. Someone who suspected this encounter was, in fact, possible. Ah, great question. I do not know for sure, but I can venture a guess. All of the reading I've done on the matter suggests that at the time, there was uncertainty that the technology would ever work, or if it did, that it would work at the scale we needed. So, I trust they made the decision to strike out when they did, fully believing it was the only way. Some may say I'm a master of keeping things together with nothing but duct tape and bubble gum. Well, if we had any gum left. Pretty sure that ran out a hundred years ago. When I'm not dealing with catastrophic engine failures, I manage the other engineers. We maintain all the machinery, computers, you name it. We keep the life support on and the ship flying. Many years ago, when I was a junior engineer, the reactor's computer burned out. The computer that controls the reactor's various regulators. I'll spare you the details, but when that happens, the ship and everyone on it is in danger of turning into a mess of hot slag. I had to jury rig parts from old media devices to prevent a meltdown. And that's how I became the boss around here. Yes, so many. Does everyone have their own spaceships like you? Do people only live on naturally habitable planets, or did they learn to terraform? Are we in contact with alien species? I have so many more, but I don't want to take up all your time. Hmm. Disappointing, but not unexpected. When you showed up, I tried to tell the others about the Fermi Paradox. I suggested that the most likely explanation for you was that humanity had developed faster, more advanced technology and had leapfrogged us. Seems I was right. Hmm. I'm not surprised. 
The amount of energy it would take to terraform an entire planet seems improbable. I can assume these types of colonies are strictly for mining and gathering rare resources since there are nearly limitless habitable planets to choose from out there. Haha! <laughs> I knew it! Incredible! Amazing! Simply amazing! In our ancestors' time, only the very wealthy could afford to build ships. Even this ship was only possible by our families pulling together nearly all of their financial resources. Ah, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. I can have a bit of a big personality, I'm told. So let me know if I ever get on your nerves. What grab drive? <laughs> Just joking with you. The Paradiso engineers filled me in. Okay. Let's see what we need to do. Hmm. All right. This will be fun. And hopefully there will be no explosions in the process. I have just received word that the drive is here. Ready to get to work? Great, great, great. There are three preparations I need you to help me make while I set things up on my end. First thing I need you to do is reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Then, turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Last, you'll need to decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Got it? Let's hop to it! be out here. Now that you're here, I can finally give my crew a chance at a... Well, well. It would appear we have the means to go nearly anywhere now, thanks to you. The engineers even upgraded our communications equipment so we can speak with passing ships. Turns out it was a pretty easy fix. Thank you again for all you've done. We don't yet know, but we did receive a star map from the Paradiso engineers. I suppose we'll just chart a course for other suitable habitable worlds until we find one that matches the quality of Paradiso at uh, Purima 2 here. Without you, we'd most likely be stuck, but you went above and beyond. I'll make sure people tell tales of your generosity for as long as our society lives. I don't know if we can ever fully repay you. Thank you again. Get the hell out, or we'll kill you. Delay! Five, four, three, two, one. 
successful fight. Captain, do you require my assistance?
Ah. Wait, wait, don't shoot! I am unarmed! Look, we can help each other. I can be useful. Just don't kill me. Levy, and I mean you, uh, no harm. This place was full of traps. Traps everywhere. I removed them. But this, this corridor is just too dangerous. See? Looks normal. One step inside, slam! You are trapped. And nobody's been standing after the doors reopen. No, sorry. If I tell you that, then I lose my leverage. They're ingenious. Took a, a lot of lives to tease them out. It's true. So many of my crewmates are gone. And this corridor is the worst. But I figured it out. There are letters on the floor. It is a grid. Those letters must spell something. But there are so many words or small phrases. Five? Six? It's hard to find... Uh, volunteers. I really thought we had it with M. Mantis. Ah, oh, poor Fred. What? Well, nobody else here figured that out. See? I've been helpful. You... you could let me go. Or better, I can help. I know these traps. I know how this mantis thinks. Please, let me help. And just give me a taste of the cachet inside. You can trust me. Trust is maybe too strong a word. We need each other, so we use each other. Then, when the arrangement is no good, we decide then? I have sacrificed too much. No, I... I won't go. I will fight you! Sorry, I could never show this lair to you. The lair is a secret that's been passed down for over a hundred years. And there are rules. You remember when you were a teenager? All the training, the drills, all of it was to prepare you for this. I know you have it in you, Leon. Register.
done it. Need some work done? Okay, no problem. 